Welcome to this overview of MPC3. This is our most powerful software update for the MPC standalone platform, elevating your productions to the next level. With a powerful new main mode, delivering fast access to your features, with stunning visual feedback, streamlining your workflow. Now with a linear timeline arranger, you can now record, edit, and arrange your beats and productions from start to finish every time. MPC3 introduces advanced macro controls for your Q-Links and XY pad with endless possibilities. With a brand new track and pad mixer with vibrant colors pushing the boundaries of your mixing. The new XL channel strip providing fast access to your plugins and effects along with powerful automation across your masters to your groups. You also have full compatibility with MPC Stem standalone, disc streaming of audio tracks, and many more enhancements inside MPC3. Hi there, I'm Andy Mack. I'd like to welcome you to this overview of MPC3. This is our biggest software update for the MPC standalone platform, elevating your productions, beat making, and live performances to a whole new level. MPC3 introduces some of the most incredible features and enhancements, everything from a brand new enhanced main mode, a ranger mode, Q-Link macro controls, through to disc streaming, all on board your MPC. So why don't you join me in this overview and we'll take a closer look at all of these brand new features. The first thing you'll see in MPC3 is the brand new main mode. This has been significantly enhanced, providing incredible visual feedback and fast access to all of your key features, speeding up your workflow. So let's start with our track tab. This allows us to navigate between all of our different track types, which are now displayed visually. I'm on a drum track, and as I hit each pad, you can now see the sample displayed in the main mode. We can move the start and end point. If we double tap the sample, this takes us straight into our track editor. Here, we can edit, warp our sample, but we've also added eight layers now per pad, which is amazing for sound design or crafting your own drum samples. We've also added the arrangement tab. Here, we can visually see all of our MIDI and audio events recorded on the selected track. If we double tap the MIDI, this takes us straight into the MPC's piano roll, which has been updated, which now displays colors that correspond to your pads and your kits. And there's also a number of enhancements to the drum grid. If you hold down shift, you'll also see a select all. Now, if we navigate to an audio track, we'll be able to visually see our audio. And here we can double tap on our audio and this again takes us straight into our audio editor. From here, we can use our toolbar to edit, cut, move our region around to add in warp and reverse, which is great for manipulating our audio track. And this can all be achieved directly from the main mode. You can also edit your plugin instruments from the main mode. Navigate to an instrument track and you'll see a little icon. Press this, this will take you straight to the interface. Creating tracks in MPC has never been so easy. You now have a new track tab. Press this and we now display all of the different track types. We're gonna press drums, then we have a browser tab that takes us straight to our sound library. Here, we can load up a drum kit and it's instantly on the pads. We've also added a duplicate tab. Here, we can duplicate the current track that you have selected. Now, I have two instances of my drum kit. You can also sample direct to a pad in the new main mode. You see a record tab, simply press this, and now you can select the desired pad. Let's start our sample. And now we're sampling directly to that pad. Let's finish our sample. And now we'll go back to our main mode and our sample is now directly on the screen. Here, we can double tap the sample, taking us straight into our editor. MPC3 features a one-to-one -one track workflow, speeding up your production. This means everything from kits, plug-in instruments to key groups are now loaded on their own unique track, making your projects clear and fast. You also have everything from subgroups, sender returns to your master channels, all with their own dedicated track. And you can also apply plug-in effects directly onto these mixer tracks. 
To edit sequences, you can access our track edit by hitting the pencil icon. Now you can see all the functions available. We can also press arrangement and press our pencil tool and you can now access all of the editing functions available. Now if we go to the top to our sequence, we can now access all of our global sequence edit tools. The menu screen has been enhanced and improved with new graphics for MPC3. Track edit that used to be program edit along with everything from track view, queue links through to sample edit and sampling. We've also added the new Excel channel strip. This enhances the mixing experience all within the main mode. Here, we can quickly access everything from our volumes to our panning on each track and pad. If we press effects, this now brings up our plugin effects. Simply press the effect and now the interface will come up on the screen. We can also rearrange the order of our plugins simply by moving them up or down. Here, I can just move Flexbeat down on our chain and we can move it back up. We can also turn our effects on and off simply by holding them down. Just hold your finger on the plugin and it will simply turn it on and off. And you can use this process across any of the insert channels. Now for our sends, we have an intelligent follower. So as we hit our sends, it brings up the return channel automatically. So I can hit number three or number four, and now you see the returns and the plugins that have been assigned. Let's add some reverb on send one. Now let's go to send two, which has delay. And then the last tab is your IO tab. Now, if we press the pad icon, this allows us to use the Excel channel strip to apply effects individually to our pads. Now you can also access the Rack Effects factory library. Simply press the tab and now you have a whole array of effects that you can apply to the selected track. Here, simply push down and now the effects are loaded onto that channel. You also have a shortcut tab. Here, you can access all of your favorite features from sounds to the new track editor, which used to be the program editor. Here, you can access all of your key features. If you go into the menu, you can customize these settings to create your own shortcuts. Simply hold on the icon and move it around the screen to customize your own layout. If you hold down a track, this takes you into the track settings. Here, we can actually change the reordering of our track number. So if we wanna move our drums to track two, so you can now reorder your tracks that fits your workflow. Now that you've seen the new main mode, let me show you how easy it is to make a beat using all of these new features. Now I've got a drum kit loaded on track one and I'm gonna start with a melodic. And if we open up our Excel channel strip, well, I've got some effects assigned to our melodic sample. And we're gonna control those from our cue links. So let's close that down and we're on four bars. Let's hit record and play. Now let's turn on automation and let's add flex beat with a hint of reverse. Just modernizing our loop, turn off automation, lay down our hats. Now, as you see, the arrangement shows my MIDI events. Now let's go to note repeat. We'll add some triplets in there. Now let's add our kick and snare, press overdub. And again, you'll see the MIDI notes being entered into the arrangement. Now let's just finish off the drums with some textures and percussion. Now let's add our 808. So we're gonna hit the pad, go to our track editor, and now turn this into a key group, go to our arrangement, and hit record. And now you see our notes being entered onto our grid. Now that we've done our bass line, we want to do a plug-in instrument track. Here, we can now select a plug-in instrument. We'll select a preset. And now let's lay down our piano melody. And again, all of your MIDI notes are represented in the arrangement. Now let's hit new track. Let's open up another plugin. Now to change the plugin, simply press on the tab. And here, any plugins that you own will be listed in MPC3. 
C3, which are fully compatible. So let's find a preset. Lay down our melody, go to arrangement. Here we can see our notes. And to finish our track, let's go back to our drum track and add a vocal sample. As you can see, the new main mode really does speed up your beat production and workflow. MPC3 includes a fully integrated arranger, allowing you to take your MPC sequences and seamlessly record, edit, and arrange on a linear timeline from start to finish. You can record MIDI, audio, edit, and arrange on a stunning DAW style layout with complete control of your compositions. Now to enter the arranger, go back to the main menu and press the arranger tab. Here we can see our beat on multiple tracks across a timeline, which we can construct into a song. So let me play the beat that I've made. Now, if you want to change tracks, just simply touch the screen or we can hold the main menu down. So it's very easy to navigate. We can use the playhead, which we can control from our cue links to scroll across our timeline. We can also navigate around the arranger using cue links so we can zoom in vertically and horizontally for any fine editing. We can also reset our screen by hitting the reset button. Now, if you hold down shift, we can actually set up song markers across our timeline. As an example, I want to make a song marker for my chorus. So I move my playhead, hold down shift and press set. Now we have that as a location. Now to jump between my markers, just press play, hold down shift. We can also create a loop point, which is really useful for punching in and out and for editing. Here we can use our cue link to set the length of the loop. Once we've set the loop, we can press play and now we'll loop around that section. Now, if we want to edit this section, we can now bring up our editing tools for the arranger. This allows us to erase, clear, trim, and many other features. Now, if I want to erase this section, I press erase, and now my loop markers are already being detected. So now we're going to erase between bars eight and nine. I select the track, and now I can do the same on my audio. Simply press do it, and now we've created a transition drop on this part of our song. You also have a list of editing features per track. If we hold down the track, you will see a pop-up. Here we have everything from delete track, half speed, through to bouncing samples and audio tracks. This is great if you want to take a particular part of a loop and bounce it down to an audio track. We can also edit our individual MIDI and audio regions. Simply select the track and the part you want to edit and double tap. Now I can use all my audio editing tools where I can cut my audio, we can move the section just by moving the region around on the screen. And this makes it really fast if you like working with audio files. Now we can do the same with MIDI. We simply select the track where we have our MIDI information, open up the editor, and from here we can use our toolbar and go in and edit all of our MIDI notes. We can also add automation directly in the arranger to our tracks and even our masters and our buses. If we press the bus tab here, we can access our master channel. So we can scroll down, find our outputs one and two, open up our track editor. And here we simply add new and we're gonna add our air filter and we're gonna have a cutoff at the beginning of our song and we simply draw it in our timeline. This allows us to add automation to the whole song structure. You can also export your arrangement as audio stems or even as an Ableton session. So you can send off to a mix engineer. We also have a drop down menu just by touching the UI, which gives you some useful shortcuts. You have everything from time correction, loop to automation and metronome. You can also create global tempo changes via automation. Simply go to sequence tempo 
And now you can draw this on the timeline. So if you want certain types of BPM at a part of your song, you can now draw those in directly into the timeline. Now that you've seen the new arranger, let me show you how you can take a typical four bar MPC sequence and turn it into a song structure. And I'm gonna be using the MPC One Plus. Now, whenever you create an MPC sequence, it will automatically be in the arranger window. Here's our four bar beat. So the first thing I wanna do it starts structuring my song. So I'm gonna double the length twice. So it's gonna give us 16 bars to work with. So now we can start structuring this. So I'm gonna get my loop point and we're gonna take our cue links and we're gonna move our loop point back to the first four bars. And from here, I can start creating my intro to my beat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on my region, hold it down, press mute, go to the next part and so forth. This means that it's instantly mute in the region. Now for my MIDI, I'm gonna click on the track and I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm going to erase our first four bars, which are automatically synced to our loop point. So now I've made my intro. So our next step is, I wanna start working on my verse and pre-chorus. So again, what I'm gonna do, hold down the region, and I'm just gonna mute the parts that I don't want so they drop after my first initial chorus. So I'm gonna take these out. And then on the second part, the pre-chorus, I'm gonna keep the piano section just to give it some contrast. And again, we're gonna mute these. And now I'm gonna take my loop point because I wanna drop out some of my drums. So we're gonna take our loop marker, and I'm gonna take this and we're gonna take the back end of our beat and we're going to erase this section here from 12 to 13, which is one bar. And I'm gonna do the same from 16 to 17. And again, take that one bar out. And now I've constructed the first part of my track. And now I'm gonna take my chorus, which is at the beginning, and I'm gonna move that to after my pre-chorus. So we're gonna copy events and I'm gonna copy that twice. So we put the number in here, we're gonna move that to bar 16 and then copy it twice. So I've now created my song structure in no time at all, just from four bars. So we can now play this back. coming to the end of our chorus. There's all our muted parts. And then here's our drum stop. And there's our extra piano that we kept on the second half. And again, and here's our last stop. Back around to our chorus. Now we can also record straight into the arranger to add additional parts to our song. So we simply just press overdub and now I'll punch in my vocal. And then we can bring in a cymbal coming into our chorus. Now we can take this a step further by adding automation to individual tracks. So I've got my melodic, I'll open up my track editor, go to my grid, and here we can select any of our plugins by add new. I'm gonna add my air filter. We're gonna to go to cut off and we're just gonna do some automation at the very beginning. And then let's play back. You can see how easy it is now to use the arranger to construct your beat ideas into full song arrangements in no time at all. 
You can also use the arranger to build up your beats and productions from the ground upwards across a linear timeline like a DAW. I'm using the Key 37, so let's dive straight in and I'll show you how this takes workstation production to a whole new level. So let's start by laying down our beat. I'm going to hit record. And like a DAW, I'm just recording on a linear timeline. And now I'm overdubbing my drum parts. Let's add this guitar sample. So now our drums are feeling good. Now let's jump to our next track. So on this track, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be adding a sample, which I've got here, and we're just going to record this straight onto its own track. And again, we're just working on the timeline. So now I'm going to bring up a string instrument, we're just going to have a holding note. This really puts the beat in the right pocket. So now that we've done that, let's hold down main, let's jump to our next track, and we're going to do like a real out of time pluck, just to add to the rhythm. Let's head over to our bass line, take our octave down and drop this in. Now that we've got our bass line, let's end our track, we'll give it some sizzle with an arp. Using the arranger to build out your tracks gives you even more inspiration and possibilities with MPC3. MPC3 is fully compatible with MPC Stems, so if you own an MPC Stems license, you can activate it directly inside the software. Now once we've created our stems in MPC3, we can even use features like the arranger to play back our stems. Now I've loaded up my stems directly inside the arranger and I've assigned my cue links to control the mutes by going into my project. So now when I turn my cue link, I'm muting my stem tracks in real time. This is a great way to create different types of ideas by utilizing stems. MPC3 is now the ultimate control service, providing endless possibilities using the new macro controls. Here, you can create complex effects chains through to multiple synth parameters that can all be automated and controlled from your cue links. So in MPC3, you can create custom project maps with endless combinations of effects and synth parameters assigned to your cue links. If you hold down the cue link button, we can access all of our different modes. Here you can see that there's now two project modes, so you can jump between these live or in a studio with your own custom settings. Now any of the cue links can have endless controls. So in cue link four, I have Jura and I have five parameters assigned to that one single cue link. So as I move my cue link, you can see it's affecting all of the parameters. Now, if we want to take it out of momentary mode, we can just hit the tab. And now it's going to stay at that particular setting. Now we can keep adding even more control to that one cue link just by pressing the plus sign. Here, we can now see all of our different parameters and all of our different track types. So we can go in and select whichever parameter that we want to add the control to. So I'm going to go back we're going to go to inserts and I'm going to add the mix and dry signal of my reverb. Now, 
Now we can change this back to momentary and you also have some additional control for adding toggle, wet and dry amounts to really customize your own settings. We also have MIDI Learn with our macros. So if we press MIDI Learn, I can now go to any parameter. I'll simply go into my filter. And now if I turn the dial, it's automatically mapped to my Q-Link. And we can keep adding more parameters using MIDI Learn. We can also use MPC's XY pad control to set up all of our own custom macros. Here I have four banks available on my XY pad, which can be assigned any number of parameters. We have our X axis, Y axis for different quadrants, and then we can even use each column on our XY pad to assign any number of parameters. If you come out of full screen, you can actually see all of the different parameters that I have assigned. We can hit our plus sign, and now we can just keep adding as many parameter effects to that one column as we desire. Now to remove a parameter, just press the bin icon. So now let's go back to full screen and let me show you how this works in a live performance. That's bringing in my reverb and then a master filter, pitch shift on the vocal, master filter, mutes on the drums, back in, and this is a drum roll, all assigned, back out, reverb, and then mute. MPC3 introduces a vertical track and pad mixer with vibrant color feedback, making it fast and intuitive for you to mix your beats in MPC. Now to access the new track mixer, let's go to main and I've got this on a shortcut. So we press the icon and now we can see all of our tracks within our project, which all have their own unique color tied to the track. Now to change tracks, simply touch the interface. And if you hold down shift, we can select multiple channels, which is great for gain staging. Now if we double tap the channel, this brings up our track settings. Here we can rename, recolor the track, and we can also move the order around of our track. So if we want to move the bass from two to three, we can do so. Then our second tab is our panning and volume. So here we can go in, we can arm, mute, solo, and pan all of our individual tracks with ease. Then we have our send effects. Here we can apply how much of the send amounts we want per track. Our next tab is our plugin effects. Here we can insert our effects onto our individual channels, and we can also change the order of our effects by simply pressing the cursor up and down. Then our next tab is our I.O. Here we can set up all of our separate outputs per track. And then our last tab, you can get to track settings. Now to access the subgroups and masters, if we simply swipe on our screen, here we can now access all of our groups, our returns and our master output channels. Here we can simply name, change the color of our tracks to suit your project. Now to access the pad mixer, let's go to our pad icon and now we have all of the same features, but these are applied to your individual pads. So we can select each channel. We can select multiple pads for gain staging. We can go to our pan and volume. Then we have our send and returns. Again, this is applied per pad. So we can add some reverb. Then we have our effects tab where we can apply our plugin effects per pad. And then we can set up our IO. In MPC3, we've added a new sample chop feature called Slice Motion, which allows you to take the feel from any type of loop from a hi-hat to percussion to a break beat, taking the feel, then randomizing the chops, which are triggered by MIDI notes from a pad. So here's a loop that I'm gonna be using. And what I wanna do, I wanna randomize the chops. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna to go to our main menu and we're gonna to go to sample edit. And I've already chopped this into 16 regions. So if we go to our main menu and on this pad, which where I've got my loop, I've actually triggered it 16 times. Now this will correlate to our chops. 
So what it's doing, it's triggering the loop, but it keeps triggering it from the beginning. So now, if we turn on our slice motion, we can trigger the loop in increments, but we can tell it at what slice we want it to start. So we might want to start the loop at three or chop five, but what we can also do is randomize it. So now it will start at loop three and it will just randomize where the chops are. So this gives you a completely different feel when using percussion loops. So we're starting from slice one now and it's now randomizing. So let's apply this technique and use this randomized loop and make a beat over the top. So let's lay down our drums. and then we'll trigger a sample. Now you can really hear how the slice motion effect is giving the hi-hat loop so much feel, making it feel loose and not quantized. Now you can apply this technique across any type of loop sample, really giving it your own feel. MPC3 introduces disk streaming to the MPC hardware. This means that you can load up your files in seconds and play back and record long audio files direct from disk. Here's a file that I've just loaded with a whole bunch of audio tracks that loaded in seconds. Now to set up disk streaming, if you press menu, projects, here we can see a list of all our files in memory and streaming. If we turn off streaming, we can see all of our files that are in memory. Now I want to select my audio track and I want to change this to streaming. So we hold down the file and press stream from disk. Now when we save this project, it will be streamed from our selected drive. You can import your MPC2 legacy project or sequences directly into MPC3 by navigating to your menu, then to browser, then locating your project or sequence. I'm going to use an expansion pack so from here, I can go into my project and I can select all sequences or an individual sequence that I want to work on. And we'll select our sequence. Now we'll press do it. And now that's going to load the sequence and the program directly into our new main mode. So now we can press play and our sequence is perfectly playing. We can now go to the arrangement, double tap, taking us to our drum grid. From here, we can take advantage of all of the new features in MPC3, such as the arranger, to finish our tracks from start to finish. MPC3 is fully compatible with all standalone MPC hardware from the original Live One through to the Key 37. You can also access all of your purchased plugin instruments and effects inside MPC3, which are fully compatible. Thanks for watching this overview of the brand new MPC3, which is gonna be available as a public beta in the coming weeks. Now to sign up, head over to akipro.com forward slash MPC3 so you can be notified. So you can download for free and experience these brand new features inside this incredible workflow. MPC3 is also gonna be available as a free update to all MPC users. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.